Yeah, so I need to start with an apology because my um, fluency in English decreases as, the, as it's becoming too late and late and it's, it should be around 7 a.m. for me right now. So I should be about mute. Uh, what I'm going to talk, oh, okay. Um, I am going to talk about standardization of Simon and Spec. And just to give some context, these are two block ciphers designed by the NSA and published in 2013, which were shortly after proposed as ISO standards. And um, earlier this year, the designers finally published a design rationale about these two ciphers, which I'm going to analyze now. To avoid my opinion influence in this presentation, what I did is to just take parts and quotes from this uh, document they published, and I'll let you do the, make the decision for yourselves. So first, let's talk about what the security claim for Simon is, and remember, this is all from their document. So they're saying that after four years of concerted effort by, the academic, by academic researchers, the ver various versions of Simon and Spec retain a margin averaging around 30%, and in every case, over 25%. I please remember these numbers, 30% and 25%. So they also say that um, what kind of attacks they considered, and they're saying that the designers team early analytic efforts led us to believe that the type of attacks that are relevant for Simon and Speck are of the differential and linear sort. And then they reiterate uh, what kind of results us academics published. And they're saying that in particular, the design team determined that uh, the single path probabilities and linear correlations did below two to the minus of the block size for 12, 16, 20, 29, and 37 rounds for versions of Simon. I'm talking about Simon, but almost everything I say now can be applied to spec. Um, I'll talk about that a bit more later. So th that's the number of rounds. Um, they're saying that is the best that academics could find, and they agree with that. And then they're, they're saying that Simon has a strong multipath effect, largely because of the, its, the simplicity of its round function. And, that how it, and we can estimate that. We might very conservatively estimate that the number of rounds admitting uh, detectable linear correlations increases by 50%. And then first and last round that ideas must be factored in. So if we total these numbers, uh, we see that the longest distinguisher for, well, I took Simon 128, but I could have taken any other version. Uh, the longest distinguisher is of 37 rounds. And that the multipath effect, we need to add 50% more, that's 18.5 uh, more rounds. Adding two more rounds for the last and first and last round tricks, which uh, totals in 57.5 rounds that the designers, the NSA claim that this is what we believe that can be attacked. Looking at the number of rounds the cipher offers, we see that um, Simon 128 has three versions um, with 68, 69, and 72 rounds. So doing a simple math, we see that, for example, for Simon 128, 128, we retain a security margin of 15.5% uh, and then and almost 17 and 20% for the other two versions. Going back to the security claim, they, mind you, they said that in every case it's over 25%. These were three cases where they don't uh, retain at least 25%. And in fact, out of 20 versions of Simon and Spec, so 10 for Simon, 10 for Spec, only one has a security margin larger, margin larger than 30%, and only four have a security margin larger than 25%. If the average is, in fact, 18%, and sometimes it is as low as 11%. I don't have any more slides because I don't want to give any conclusions. You can decide for yourselves, but I have nothing else to say. Thank you.